First of all, first off, there is this faux leather belt, and it's uh, like a feels like leather, but it's just uh, rubber or plastic. It's from a company called Good Works Make a Difference. It's got a nice little clasp that says Good Works, um, and it is printed with positive messages like "You are beautiful." Um, amazing, unique, exceptional, and so on for the whole length of, of the belt. So there's a very wearable belt um, that a young person would probably appreciate. Next there was this uh, leaf cutout cuff, silver tone, uh, just needs a little polish, uh, and very wearable condition, and nice and lightweight. Um, quite comfortable, not uh, precious metal, but a uh, very wearable bracelet. There was a wooden bead necklace. This is a triple strand necklace with these unusual wrapped beads. And uh, it's just on a, a nice fiber cord with a button closure. If you didn't like um, wearing a fiber cord, you could easily repurpose these beads. There was a statement necklace in silver tone. It's just pressed metal. Um, and these diamond shapes in the circles, or sorry, triangle shapes in the circles. Lobster claw clasp. It's lightweight, so very wearable, um, in excellent condition, uh, not marked in any way. There were some other bangles. Um, this heavy, uh, thick, silver tone bangle. Um, it's not tarnished. There's a few little scratches, but uh, the inside doesn't have uh, any wear, so very wearable. Um, a silver tone dot dash uh, design. It's a little um, bent out of shape, so it needs to be put on a, a, a mandrel and, and put back into a circle. But again, very wearable, not precious metal. And this um, gold tone with sort of a uh, copper interior where the color has worn off, but a uh, very wearable, um, nice textured gold tone bracelet with X's and dots in the pattern. Then there were necklaces. This is a three strand necklace that keeps uh, tangling on itself, so I'll, I won't spend the time to untangle it totally. But you can see there's blue dyed shells, there's plastic pearls and plastic rondelles. Um, pl I think they're plastic uh, metal uh, looking beads and some very lightweight filigree diamonds. Uh, these are all um, separated in stations on the necklace so that everything remains spaced when you wear it. So there's an example of the spacing. Um, so again, a very wearable necklace. Lobster claw clasp, not marked, um, but lightweight, summery, um, and very wearable. There, I thought I'd show you this uh, lovely belt buckle in the shape of shells. Um, nothing wrong with it, just needs the belt attached to it. Hate to judge a piece of jewelry by how finicky it is to untangle, but I <laughs> uh, have to admit with this piece I have been judging. Um, this is a three strand necklace, um, lobster claw clasp, lightweight, not precious metal, not marked in any way, um, but it has this lovely um, Aurora Borealis smoked crystal on the bottom, a ball with a rhinestone, a feather, a swallow, and a gray um, round faceted crystal. And these all hang in different places on the three strands. Unfortunately, um, as you can see, uh, I still haven't got all the tangles out of it, but another very wearable uh, necklace and a nice piece to find in a jewelry bag. Part of the um, issue with this jewelry bag is that there were six magnetic pieces, strongly magnetic pieces. But here's the first. Um, hematite uh, bracelet, heavy bracelet with an amethyst um, stone, round stone in the center. 
um, the beads are magnetized and the clasp is a strong magnet. Um, so this was uh, tangling everything in the bag. Um, so that's the first magnetic piece. The second magnetic piece is this rather stretched out um, hematite bracelet, again magnetized. I'm not sure what the value is in having these magnetized pieces. I don't know if there's some sort of um, health-related uh, benefit to wearing a magnetized um, bracelet, but there seems to be an awful lot of magnetic things out there. Um, this is, uh, the cord is starting to break, so these um, are really suitable for just uh, repurposing, taking off the cord and, and doing something new with them. Then there were four other magnetic uh, necklace cum bracelets. These are these single strand um, pieces that have magnetic beads in them, usually hematite. So in this case, it's uh, these hematite sections. Uh, and the rest of it's all plastic, plastic bicones, plastic eye beads, plastic uh, little silver tone beads. Uh, this can be lined up and, you know, wrapped uh, as a bracelet, as a necklace. And because it's magnetic, it uh, sticks to itself and makes, you know, whatever piece of jewelry you want. This one's very lightweight. Um, might be worth saving the hematite beads, but I do have a, quite a few of them, so I would probably give this to someone who, who would like to wear it. Um, a second one in a similar vein is uh, this one. You can see it's all uh, quite uh, neutral colors. There's sort of a, a purpley pink um, plastic bicone, silver tone spacers, the magnetic hematite beads. Make a nice bracelet. This one's a shorter um, than the other one that I just showed you. So probably just a two strand bead uh, bracelet that you would make from it. So that's four magnetic pieces. Um, there's this magnetic piece. Again, uh, it has uh, hematite pieces. It has metal beads, these metal oval beads, um, glass squares, and then I'm not sure if the little silver spacers are metal. I haven't really checked them. But again, um, a fifth magnetic piece to wear as a necklace or a bracelet. This one's um, not quite as smooth in the way it sits. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, and here's the last one, a nice black and white uh, magnetic necklace bracelet. Um, faux pearls, uh, plastic uh, black bicones, uh, I think these are plastic, silver tone beads, and then the nice faceted, again, uh, hematite beads. So these three all have the same design of hematite beads in them, just very different designs of necklaces, and then this has just plain uh, uh, hexagon shaped hematite beads. Here are some of the bracelets that I found in that three pound uh, jewelry bag from Value Village. The first bracelet is an expandable um, uh, bracelet vintage, well worn uh, on the inside, uh, and it's missing a fair number of its rhinestones. Um, it has Aurora Borealis sort of uh, champagne or almost peach colored uh, round rhinestones and uh, flat navettes. And unfortunately, it, depending on, on how you knock it, the navettes just pop out. Of course, I can't illustrate here, but uh, as easily as it was happening before. But the, there we go. So the, um, the navettes are just flat-backed, and when they pop out, they tend to lose their foil. They're not glued in. Um, so this is just a, a piece that's not worth repairing. Um, but I will harvest the rhinestones from it. And I may keep the, um, the bracelet in case there's a, uh, a need to uh, use that setting to repair something in the future. Uh, it's also a very small bracelet. I was going to show that. Uh, in comparison to this regular bangle, you can see how small it is. And even though it's an expansion bracelet, uh, it would be quite tight, or it is quite tight on an average wrist. 
This next bracelet is just plastic, sort of moon uh, glow type um, faceted rhinestones, but all the rhinestones are there. Uh, it's well worn on the inside, but I think that this can be cleaned up and perhaps uh, a new uh, painted finish be put on it so that this would be a, a wearable piece. Um, it looks quite nice on and it has a nice bit of shine to it. The next piece was also broken. Uh, this was a jewelry bag full of many broken pieces, but um, this one has value. Um, it's a lobster claw clasp, but a nicer style. Um, the only thing wrong with it is that the end part, the other side of the clasp, has become detached from uh, the chain. And with a bit of glue and some pressure or perhaps some soldering, uh, that can be repaired. There was this simple stretchy bracelet um, with a metal uh, remembrance ribbon for breast cancer. And uh, so this is a simple bracelet. I'm not sure what I will do with it, um, but I'd like to remind uh, all my female friends out there um, to regularly do their breast exams and to get their mammograms. Um, I had an aunt who died from breast cancer and uh, there's lots of cancers uh, to various types in my family. So caution um, and care are, are always good things with our health. Then there was this plastic stretchy bracelet. And this is, I would say, just a kid's bracelet. It totally is plastic, even though it looks like um, metal. And, and it's funny, even though th where, where the gold is um, wearing off, it looks kind of um, coppery underneath. And uh, so it's interesting that even though it's totally plastic, it has that coppery look under the gold tone plastic finish. And then there's this gorgeous vintage bracelet. Um, you can see the lovely press design on the side, the chevrons, very detailed. Um, unfortunately, one panel is missing. These panels are um, pressed and uh, uh, pressed around the uh, mesh base of the bracelet. Let me open this up. Oh. There. My fault, I was pushing it the wrong way. Um, so it has a nice tight clasp and well hidden. Um, it's marked patent pending and it's got the letters AM period DEL and a uh, sort of flattened diamond shape with SP in the center on one side of the clasp. And on the opposite side of the clasp on the back, it's got um, a very large version of that design. I'm not sure if this is focusing, but uh, uh, I'm hoping that with a great deal of care that I can um, open up the metal that's clasped around this last bit of the mesh, move it back to this section here and then cut off the and cut off the excess mesh. I don't know if that's going to be possible. It's certainly the bracelet is long enough that for me, if that one section were taken out, I don't know if you can see that, but if the one section were taken out, that it would fit quite nicely. Um, but that's a very delicate repair. Um, certainly something that I'm not skilled enough to uh, handle. And I'm really curious as to whether the, this um, bracelet is gold-plated. Um, there's some evidence just uh, looking at the sections that it might possibly be wearing in that way where the plating is coming off. Um, but it's difficult to show that uh, on the camera. Then there's this stretchy bracelet. It's not even hematite. Um, it's just plastic. It sure looks like hematite. It's got those cool eye beads and some silver tone spacers, but they are just plastic, 100% plastic. And a few more bracelets that were in that um, 
uh, jewelry bag. This bracelet is uh, some type of braided cord and it has a little tiny, tiny heart charm on it. Um, and what surprised me, there's a little tiny rhinestone here by my fingernail. And on the back, I put it the right way up. Uh, this is marked Leah Sophia. I'm a little too close, sorry there. So a Leah Sophia bracelet. I'm not sure if um, there's any value in this. It looks well worn. Um, it looks like there was a bit of silver on the cord or in the cord at one point, but it's well worn off. Then there was this large bangle, sort of an infinity design. Um, you can see that the uh, finish, I think it was maybe gold tone, is wearing off, but it's polishing up very well uh, to a silver color. And uh, one of the things that we uh, learned in the uh, Restore, Refinish, Refurbish uh, jewelry group is that you can use these um, gel nail files, the labels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and if you use the settings from 4, 5, 6, 7 up, and not the lower ones, uh, you can po both polish and clean up surfaces. And with the five, you can see that this finish cleans up really nicely to a bright, shiny copper. So I'm going to put this um, uh, bracelet away and uh, shine it up. There was another stretchy bracelet. Um, or perhaps anklet, because even if uh, if you tighten this, I don't know if I can, if you try to tighten this up, it makes quite a, a large bracelet. Uh, anyway, it has uh, nice metal gold tone sections, these nice uh, sort of flame uh, dangles. So I'm going to uh, take this apart and keep the pieces for uh, future jewelry making. Another bracelet that's a little worse for wear is this really shiny, beautiful rhinestone bracelet. Uh, it has two types of uh, squares, one with a small rhinestone in the center and one with a large rhinestone in the center. Um, and rhinestones either in a cross shape or on the four corners. Now it's, it's stretched out, as you can see, but again, this can be... Um, taken off of the cord, here's the cord sort of falling apart, um, uh, restrung, or the pieces could be used, uh, repurposed into different pieces of jewelry. Um, and the rhinestones uh, at last resort could be harvested and uh, used in other jewelry. Then there was this interesting bracelet, um, silver tone metal with uh, sort of the dark patina added to it. All of the cabochons or whatever type of stones were in these circles in the center are gone. Uh, so that kind of gives you free reign to add whatever you want to it. The ends are quite uh, detailed and uh, the uh, whole bracelet is uh, not signed. It has, um, you know, it's not worn either. It, the only thing is that the stones are missing. Um, and you, and I, you can tell that there were stones in there because there's still some shiny blue left. And I think that's about it for the bracelets. Uh, in terms of uh, necklaces, there were quite a few necklaces um, in this bag. Broken necklaces, tangled necklaces. You've already seen the all of the uh, magnetic pieces that were uh, helping to tangle up the um, necklaces. This necklace is broken, but it's really just... Uh, needs to have uh, this little silver chain put back on this end. The uh, It fell off of the, the jump ring. This has got a lobster claw clasp and it's a multi-chain necklace. The chains are still tangled together and uh, I haven't got it totally <laughs> taken apart. Um, but it's got a good shine to it. The, the, the chains are all uh, in good shape and good color. So I'm not sure if I'm going to detangle it um, 
add embellishment to it, or just reuse the chain. I could take it apart and use the pieces of chain. So there's one necklace. This necklace is also broken. This is um, another lobster claw necklace. And all of the strands, well, there's four strands in total, so three of the strands have become detached at one end. Uh, this has got a hang tag that says icing. Other than the fact that they're all detached, um, this would be a, a very wearable necklace, lobster claw clasp, nice faceted plastic beads, uh, good shine to them, um, the, no color loss, it's that nice sort of dark gunmetal color. So um, it is possible to relink these tiny chains if you have the patience. Um, but I'm so I could fix it. I just undecided at this point. This uh, bag had many treasures, but uh, a lot of them were broken. So I've got you know repairs for the next 20 years. Then there was this wooden um, barrel clasp necklace, uh, bamboo beads, wooden beads, a couple of uh, metal beads at the end. Um, very short, uh, I'll probably repurpose this or, or give it away to someone. The next necklace was a victim of the tangles, and you can see the pieces falling out here. Um, it has a really nice sort of 60s vibe if it's all put back together, at least the flower does. Um, but unfortunately, one leaf of the flower, which is a plastic-covered metal, uh, was broken off in the tangles. And you can see that with uh, the, all the magnetic pieces that were in the, the bag, uh, this uh, wire that the flower was on just did not survive. So I'll be taking the, the chain off the... Um, the petal trying to see if I can repair this. It probably is something that can be glued back together and it would probably make a really nice uh, brooch instead of uh, a necklace. Then there was this um, much worse for wear, very long uh, tassel necklace. So it's this, you can see the ends here are free, and then it comes up to a knot where they are knotted together, and then there's the two strands of the necklace, uh, and as you get to the top, there's a lot of rust where the finish has worn off. This is bead chain. Um, there are a lot of good lengths of bead chain in here, um, but the, the clasp and the end pieces are uh, all rusted. This was a Joe Fresh piece. Uh, looks like it either uh, was really well loved and worn a lot, or it went through the wars, like got dragged behind a car or something. Um, so I will sal salvage the bead chain um, that is still usable um, for other projects. The next necklace is quite cute. Uh, a necklace with a resin uh, pendant in the shape of a rose and two short strands of beads. Uh, this is missing the hook that would uh, be the closure at the end, um, but other than that, it's uh, a very wearable necklace. Um, there was this silver chain in the Tangled Mess. And uh, it's a nice uh, bright silver color, lobster claw clasp in great condition, uh, lightweight. Uh, all it needs is a pendant. And this was an earring, uh, a single earring that was in the jar. Um, and so I'm thinking I will uh, add a, a little uh, jump ring onto that and make it into, there we go. Oh, sorry, here's the single earring. I took already took the hook off, so I'm going to add a jump ring onto that and make it into a pendant uh, for this little chain. 
Um, another very wearable necklace that was in there was again uh, with a lobster claw clasp and it was this rhinestone elephant with the trunk up. Lovely little um, enamel at the end of the trunk and for the eye all the rhinestones are there. Uh, modern piece, it's not marked with a particular maker but it's very pretty. That's the close up of the elephant. There was a bead chain necklace. Um, just no, no pendant. So there another chain usable for a necklace. There was a string of pearls that uh, was broken. These are nice uh, heavy glass pearls. They're not real. Um, but they're beautiful luster, beautiful color. Um, and uh, I will save them knotted on the string this way so they don't fall all over the place. I have one that has fallen off. Um, but that is uh, a beautiful set of pearls for repurposing. There was this uh, well-worn uh, necklace, again, uh, uh, sort of a lariat necklace that's been knotted, and it also has uh, a lobster claw clasp at the other end. But you can see that it's um, nowhere near as shiny as any of the other chains, so I'm not sure if I'll do anything with this. For now, I'll just, I'll just store it. Then there was this, I like to call this the Wonder Woman necklace. <laughs> this is a collar uh, with a huge plastic and uh, uh, cabochon, I guess, for the better, in, better name for it, uh, on part of the pendant. And then this is a wooden pendant in the triangle at the bottom. And the lobster claw clasp on this is damaged. Um, so you can see the lobster claw clasp is missing the part that does the hooking. Um, so it just needs a new lobster claw clasp. That's an easy fix. And then this will be a wearable necklace. Finally, there were um, all of the broken chains, except I think I have one. I don't have one down here. Um, so just part of a necklace that had uh, the letters ER um, attached to something. So a little bit of gold chain, a uh, snake chain that is snapped in the middle. It's good color still, but broken. Um, this little, oh, this was uh, one of those chains that um, had the ribbon, the, the clear ribbon and... Uh, strings on it, no pendant, so I just cut off that and discarded the dirty ribbon. Um, here's this nice flat um, curled loop chain, but again it's missing the other end of the clasp. This one has just a little hook on it, so I'm not sure if it's missing just a ring or if this was two hooks meant to go on eyeglasses. Um, another uh, sort of flattened snake type chain missing uh, the clasp. This heavier um, bronze colored chain with a broken lobster claw. That can be uh, repaired. Just put a new lobster claw on it and then that, that chain would be wearable. It's a good weight. It's a nice color. And then this is a rusty snake chain. Um, not sure if it's going to clean up and uh, it's probably not worth uh, saving the components of it because they're they've lost their plating and so on. Um, I'll be back with uh, brooches. <laughs>